One of the biggest reasons why people struggle to manifest their desires, especially in relation to manifesting a specific person or being more liked at work or scoring big clients and things that are related to others is because it's really hard to grasp the concept of free will. And one of the greatest things that I found after studying Neville Goddard's teachings is how free will works in our reality because everyone is essentially you pushed out. And that's why in today's video I'll be sharing with you how free will works as we discuss Neville Goddard's teachings of how everyone is you pushed out imagination and law of assumption and i'm also gonna share with you a recent big win with a proof from my own manifesting journey to prove to you that there is no free will in yourself as well as others except in your own imagination so if you want to learn more about how free will works so you can speed up your manifestation journey stay tuned and let's get started welcome back to this video my name is rav sitala I'm your manifesting coach and if you'd like to enhance your manifestation journey with deep hypnotic manifestation meditations don't forget to check out our live in the end meditations program all based on Neville Goddard's amazing techniques so before we talk about free will it's really important for us to understand how imagination works and uh, Neville Goddard often said imagination is God in action because after we imagine the reality that we have it starts conforming according to our imagination and this doesn't only happen for us but also for the world and the people around us and also I've heard Neville Goddard's and various lectures say that once we leave things out for imaginations there's nothing that we can do after except to go on living in our 3d reality and the more peacefully we try to deal with this 3d reality before the manifestation comes the easier it gets for the manifestation to arrive and here's how Neville explains this in his live in the end lecture are we not tell that God calls a thing that is not seen as though it were seen and then the unseen becomes seen. He calls everything from the unseen into the seen in this simple manner. For he is the resurrecting power. So if I assume that I am, I don't have to have evidence to support it. I assume that I am. I am what? Well, I name it. And having given it a name, given it form, given it definition, remaining in it, I resurrect it. And if it takes a thousand men to aid the birth of that state, a thousand men will play their parts. And I don't have to go out and look for them. And in a way you can look at this as everyone becoming a puppet or more as a follower of your imagination, including yourself. And I'm going to give you a few examples of how this imagination works in your own reality. Uh, for example, one of the best ways I found myself to beat my own procrastinating habit is to see myself doing the work that I dread before I do it. So if there's something that I find really complex and that I find dreadful, what I simply do is I visualize myself doing the work and enjoying it and not even a few hours later I find myself sitting in front of the computer editing my website and doing these complex works which otherwise I just couldn't do it. And this works for me every single time. I don't have to motivate or pressure myself into doing this. That's why compared to last year when I was only making two to three videos per week, now I've been creating almost over like 20 videos every single week. and. I just feel the joy in the work that I do. I just love doing it. And maybe you've experienced something like this in your own life as well. For example, you're sitting there on your couch watching Netflix and all of a sudden you feel like grabbing that kombucha or something else that's inside of your refrigerator. And the more stronger the images gets in your mind of you drinking that drink, the more certain you can be that you're gonna go grab that drink no matter how lazy you feel at the moment. I mean, the point that I'm trying to make here is when we imagine something even we start losing our free will because once that image is created in our mind and the more solidified it gets we start losing our personal free will to that so you can program a mind with images that's more favorable to your desires and what you want to accomplish in your life or if you just let it go in its own place it's gonna attract probably something crazy one of the things that i love watching is uh, true crime videos and documentaries i know most people in the spiritual path may try to avoid watching such violent movies and videos but it really helps me understand why people do what they do and in one true crime video that i watched not too long ago there was a guy who got caught for murdering his wife and two really young beautiful daughters and later when he was interviewed he said that he fell in love with a woman outside of his marriage and his wife seemed to be very controlling while he was very polite and he wasn't violent of any means and you know he was a very quiet kind of person and although he still loved his wife and he adored his two little daughters 
In his distorted mind, he started seeing himself getting rid of his entire family just to be with this new woman that he met. And he almost felt possessed by this vision and this vision became even more and more real in his mind. And he committed a really gruesome act even though he loved them because he became a slave to his own evil imagination. I mean, there's nothing that we can do to justify the vile and evil action that he did, but that's the negative power of our imagination. And one last thing about imagination, it doesn't always have to be in forms of visuals or seeing things in your mind's eye, because it is believed that the only way our subconscious mind learns, understands, and comprehends is through images. Like when we were young, we see apple and we relate that object, the way it looks, the way it feels, smells to the word apple. I mean, that's how we are taught to memorize the alphabets and words and things like that, right? And after a while, this process has become completely automatic we don't even have to visualize apple to understand what the word apple means we just know and deep down it is believed that the subconscious mind is still converting the words in your thoughts as images in your own imagination that's how it understands everything around us now let's talk about the concept of everyone is you pushed out to understand how free will works in others. Now everyone in our reality is acting according to our own assumptions, thought, images and the imaginations we keep having in our own minds about them and ourselves. And because everyone is you pushed out, there are versions of beliefs that you have held in your mind in the past. I mean, what we see in our reality is essentially a reflection of our past assumptions, beliefs, thoughts, and everything else. Now, when we're trying to talk about the concept of free will and others, there lies a great deal of confusion when it comes to the difference between what we can control or change and the things we can't. Because sometimes we don't know how reality is going to pan out. We think that habits or things that are directly related to us are more controllable and thus can be changed easily and the things outside of us like our job or people or things that are really out of our control in the 3d reality feel like we don't have any power to change them but the truth that i found is as long as we keep our imagination boundless and place no limits while visualizing or affirming what we want it's totally possible for us to induce such changes in others as well and the only way we can do this is through exercising the power of our imagination seeing as if we've already accomplished what we want even when it includes other people and you don't get hung up on if other people are changing or not because what we see right now is a version of infinite number of possibilities that are out there and all these possibilities exist simultaneously right now here in this moment that's what Neville Goddard means by creation is already finished all possible realities that we could ever imagine exist here and now and when we're manifesting something that's outside of ourselves, like other people or our job opportunities we're not even changing them or even ourselves we're simply tuning into a more favorable reality in which we're experiencing embodying our desire in the way that we want. That's how it is possible for us to manifest a specific person or other things that's actually related to our reality. And just to demonstrate this point further, I wanted to share with you a recent success story from my own life, which is pretty much ongoing right now as we speak, where I was able to use my imagination to influence free will of multiple other people in my reality to help me achieve my goals. So I recently did this experiment on TikTok. At the end of last year, I had been struggling a lot with growing this YouTube Rav Empower channel. Channel. Firstly, the channel got demonetized. Then once I was able to get the channel's monetization back, I started losing traction of views and then the number of subscribers completely stopped. Of course, that was disheartening and, you know, I was even mad at YouTube for some time. But then I decided to look within. I really wanted to figure out what was going on with my own assumptions in this situation. I found that I had this really deeply penetrated subconscious belief which said my English is no good and people didn't understand me and I think it had got more to do with my like stuttering and stammering during my earlier years because I used to really struggle with communicating with others I mean people really didn't understand what I was saying you know and the second belief that I found that was limiting was people didn't care they only cared if the videos that I posted was of Neville Goddard in his own voice but they didn't really care about my opinions and my own voice of course finding this out was pretty disappointing because I largely believed in it but then to overcome these beliefs and to reprogram my own subconscious mind I had a great idea and the idea was since now I'm here in Nepal I'm gonna start recording the videos in Nepali because of course I shouldn't really have any blocks there when it comes to the language right I realized that I really didn't and I just could pull out my phone and I could start talking for like minutes and to see this happen was pretty cool and before I even posted a single video I started affirming that people love watching my videos after that I started posting one video a day in this new TikTok channel and for the first week there was no progress but the surprising thing was even though there was no growth in the TikTok channel uh, I got an email from 
YouTube saying that I had just reached uh, 10,000 subscribers. So that meant that I had grown over like probably 1,400 subscribers within that time, like probably within a month time. But after a couple of weeks of posting those TikTok videos in Nepali, multiple videos started to get viral every single week. I mean, within two weeks, the channel had generated over 1 million views. And I keep receiving messages and comments every single day of people saying how much they love my content and how much they find it helpful. And honestly, the view and things that are like pretty arbitrary to me at this point, to be honest, you know, I'm just doing this more as an experiment. But the joy that I find from reading people's messages and how like they've been get getting help from my videos, like that's that's more superior to any other things that I could ever accomplish. I mean, I can share more about this if you're interested the, in the exact details and techniques that I use. And you can let me know down in the comment section below. But the point that I want to emphasize here is people start reflecting back your true assumptions once you begin to change them. They mirror your beliefs, thoughts, and subconscious conscious images of yourself and them because everyone is you pushed out. It may appear as though they are confirming and adapting to your assumptions about the situation, but in truth, you are simply choosing a new reality from the infinite number of possibilities available, a reality that aligns more closely with your desires. If you read the book Reality Transurfing, this is referred to as space of variation. And just because I was able to exercise my imagination by affirming, by visualizing, of how I wanted to accomplish this desire and get rid of my blocks, I was able to do exactly just that. So in a way, we may even be thinking that we're influencing free will of others, but in actuality, we are just changing and choosing the reality that we want to be in. And that's what's happened in my own case here. So if you've struggled with manifesting your own desires or understanding the concept of free will, Remember that imagination plays a significant role in shaping our reality. Everyone we encounter is a reflection of our own imagination and by embracing boundless possibilities, we can manifest the life we truly desire. So if you're interested in enhancing your manifestation journey, I invite you again to explore I Live in the End meditations, which are all based on Neville Goddard's techniques. These deep hypnotic meditations can support you in aligning your imagination with your desired reality. With that being said, I want to thank you all for watching this video. I hope you gained valuable insights into the workings of free will, imagination, and manifesting. And if you have any questions or would like to share your experiences, please leave a comment below. Stay tuned for more videos and until next time, keep imagining and manifesting your dreams. And with that, I want to wish you all the very best. Happy manifesting. Goodbye and namaste.